Welcome back to the All Things Dead podcast, the podcast for everything in the Walking Dead universe. From the Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, Walking Dead World Beyond, future Rick Grimes movies, future Daryl and Carol spinoff. Apparently, we're getting backstories on everything. Hopefully, a Negan spinoff. Everything in the Walking Dead universe can be found here on the All Things Dead podcast with your host, Steve Kachevsky. You can find the video versions of the All Things Dead podcast on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel, which is in the description of all podcast episodes. That's where my other podcast, The Coach Steve Show, is. That's where you can find these videos on that podcast YouTube channel, as well as the other podcast stuff. Listen to this wherever you listen to your podcast, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever podcasts can be listened to, go listen to it. And please, on everything, could you give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share out, leave a, a you know four or five star, a good review. If you don't want to give it a star or anything, if you don't like it, just, just pretend this never happened, please. I like you never listen to it. Don't give it a bad rating, please. It really helps when there's likes and shares out and everything else. And how to get this better, let me know going to ramp this up now that it's for me personally it's summer we're going to ramp this up to get a little better get you know more reviews on the walking dead i keep saying it over and over going to go back and watch the walking dead recap the episodes now that it's summertime for me in my life whatever we're, we're upgrading some of the podcast equipment as you can see if you're watching the video i still have the other microphone now we've got this microphone we've got this other equipment going to ramp it up a little bit so again like, subscribe, please share out, thumbs up, uh, four or five star review. If you can't give it a four or five star review, please don't do anything. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, please. And thank you. Coach Steve show YouTube channel where you can find the video version, audio version, wherever you listen to podcasts, that's where you can find it. We are slowly wrapping up fear the walking dead. We, uh, just had episode 15 USS Pennsylvania from season six and then we're going to get into uh the walking dead world beyond will be back and we're actually moving along to get to to the walking dead coming back and sometimes it's in august we're getting back um getting different news out um during the summer they want to come out with backstory episodes so like we kind of already had that negan was a a character daryl was a character carol and I'm not. I, I fully didn't read it, but from my understanding, they want to kind of give you a background. I don't know if it's going to be before the apocalypse. Um, that's just more filming they have to do, and they're pretty busy on filming these uh, uh, season eleven episodes because we're gonna have twenty two to twenty four of them, and whatever other stuff they've got going on. Um, we've gotten pictures, we've gotten uh, different photos released of season 11 and the walking dead. It shows Negan taking care of a Walker. It shows um, our characters together. So Negan's going out and helping them. So it's going to be interesting to see. I know they said we would um, deal with the Maggie and Negan stuff. So it's pretty exciting. So but anyway, we just got with fear of the walking dead fear. Of the walking dead this season has been really good. You're getting, believe it or not. Um, if you're just listening to this and you haven't watched fear, go back and watch fear at the very beginning. It was, eh, and even part of the second season was, eh, but as it was going on, it became good. I liked it. Season three, I liked. The beginning of season four, I liked. And then it just kind of fell off. Season five went down. But you're getting those type of vibes from some parts of season two and season three of Fear the Walking Dead. And you're getting parts of Fear, or uh, excuse me, The Walking Dead. So you're getting those type of vibes. It's been really good. Um, the acting's been really good. The writing's actually been really good. They really ramped it up. I mean, no offense to them, it couldn't get any worse from what they had in season five. So it's been really cool that they've ramped it up. It's been really good. This one had everything from, you know, suspense, um, a little bit of action, a little bit, nothing too crazy. Um, the big thing was suspenseful things, uh, misdirection things. You finally got to see Dakota get bashed in the head, which is fantastic. I think she needs to look at the flowers and just be bye-bye, be gone. Um, the only annoying part of this whole episode, I think, is Morgan. Morgan's trying to do the right thing. He puts all this pressure on himself. And so when things don't go right, when people look to him and things aren't going the way they are, when when Teddy's going to um, have these, I think it's maybe it's two to four missiles. I couldn't remember the thing. Teddy's thing is to send these missiles off, destroy everything in their wake. 
Some of his people are left in this bunker. Alicia, Alicia is left in this bunker to, 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 to survive. Teddy and his people that are out in the submarine are not going to survive. So um, Morgan has taken a lot of this blame. I think he kind of takes the blame for um, miscarriages of Grace's baby. So he puts all this pressure on himself. And it, and it goes back to all the, the Walking Dead things where he, he, as far as we know, lost his son. According to him, we've never seen it. but. We kind of have to be like 98% sure that Dwayne, his son, is gone. Puts that blame on himself. He went this complete other way in The Walking Dead, which at the time annoyed a lot of people where he, he was too good. He kept saying, you know, all life is precious. Didn't want to kill anybody. Um, he did build that jail cell that Negan has lived in for years. Um, so he did all those things. And then he snaps again and goes back to his ways um, where he and Rick go out and Rick's killing people. Morgan's kind of killing people. He's kind of, kind of done that in fear. That's the only annoying part of this was he wants to take the blame for everything. He wants to almost do the sacrificial thing because when they're going into this, one thing in fear this last season, I believe, and then this this season, they're, they're, they um, went and looked at like um, nuclear plants, um, radiation. I don't think The Walking Dead really dabbled in that. The Walking Dead dabble in everything that's going to happen in the apocalypse, you know, cannibals, you got to deal with humans, you got to deal with the walkers, you got to deal with building up a community and it be taken away. You got to deal with bad people. Like they're, they're going in each spot from the comic book, but it's going from each spot of what are you going to deal with in the apocalypse? So fear is now has been addressing radiation. Now that's not something you kind of think about, but it, it, it's just another thing to deal with. And so with this submarine and the area they're in, like we know from, from Grace, she's doesn't have she doesn't know how much longer she has to live. She's not she's sick, but she's not like on her deathbed because she's been exposed to radiation. And the submarine, they have the um, indicator, the reader. I think it tells you the number of how high the ra radiation is. When they're going through, they find out all these walkers. I think they said hundreds of them on the submarine. Now, Teddy and them have beat Morgan and them there. They're already there. They're trying to get the thing powered up to, to do these missiles. And, you know, Morgan's kind of lying about the numbers. Then they find out they go through this one door, this radiation just go through the roof. Um, but it's the only way that they could finally get to the main thing where Teddy is. So he's doing the sacrificial thing of, I'm going to take all the blame and... To, to, to sacrifice myself to make sure that you guys can live. But that's not what they want. They want him to survive. They think they can work together. And that's what I think too. Morgan's, that is only, an only annoying part, annoying part besides the strand thing, which we'll get to in a second. Um, that's the only annoying part of Morgan's character in this episode. Um, he's still a badass. I, I, there's no question about it. You know, he's one of the most badass characters. I would love to see him go against Negan. Um, I think Morgan would beat Negan's ass. Uh, but it was suspenseful. You know, you had Teddy talking with Dakota. He's built this um, bond, this relationship, which is kind of funny because her mom, apparently not her sister, her mom was building up to be prepared to go against um, Teddy. I don't know if he know. maybe he does. I don't know if Dakota fully told him that. We just find out that what Dakota has been looking for Um what she's been looking for and that he can promise it to her. But he's also said like, yeah, we're going to die us here right now. We are not going to make it, but guess what? It's a part of the plan. This is an, this isn't an end. This We are the ending to a beginning and he has got her. It looks like he, she is bought into this. So like I said, in the last podcast from watching the last episode, I didn't know if this was the plan. I didn't know if Dakota was doing this. As part of the plan, because remember, the last time we had seen her before she found Teddy and Alicia, Alicia, I don't know why I say Alicia, it's Alicia, just the way it's spelled, I, I don't know, um, but anyway, and I didn't know, the last time we saw her, she was working with Morgan saying like, this is the plan, this is what they do, like we know that they were underground, so she was kind of helping them, but then it's kind of turned in, it quickly turned into that she's kind of bought into what he's doing, so a part of, uh, of everything is, is this part of Morgan's plan? But as this episode had gone on, it does not look that way anymore. If there was a plan with her, we don't know about it. 
or they've kind of figured out that she's abandoned it altogether. So it looks like she's accepted the fact when Teddy says they're all going to all perish. Everybody there with them kind of knows this is what they're doing, but they've all accepted it. So that's just kind of what's going on. Um, and again, going back to our group, they're trying to find their way through this big ass submarine. Uh, they have characters outside the submarine. They found like a, I guess a map or a blueprint and is guiding them through it. And they found there's hundreds of walkers. Um, it's a submarine, like a military submarine where you got guys stayed in then like um, bunk beds or there's triple bunks or anything like that. And there's just tons of walkers. They got to fight through them. They've got to figure out where they're going. And then we finally get a Teddy and Morgan discussion. Um, and we get a John Dory, like John Dory Sr. Teddy discussion. That's the first time they've talked since Teddy for uh, John Dory has put Teddy in jail. So it just had, it, it's tying up loose ends in this episode, even though at the very end, we still have to get through a lot of more of the things, but they're tying things are kind of wrapping up like, okay, there's that little confrontation with John Dory and Teddy after all these years. Morgan and Teddy finally talk to each other. And he has really gotten to Morgan's head of saying, like, what I'm doing is true. Like, what I'm doing, I'm not lying about. It. I'm not doing anything. You're trying to get people to think this way. You're trying to do this. And, it, and what you're saying isn't all true. You're just saying things to make them feel better, or yourself feel better. He's getting inside Morgan's head. Is some of it true? Maybe. But Morgan, even though Morgan is doing it for himself a little bit to try to redeem himself in some ways or say, like, I want these people to survive. I don't really need to survive. You know, the whole reason why he left Alexandria was because he wanted to get away from people. Um I'm trying to fully remember that was so long ago. I think mainly because bad things happen or he doesn't know if he's worthy of this or he's not worthy of that. And that's just kind of what he thinks. And he, you know, he found a place here. I don't know. But then he like, he disappears. He gets these walkers to go to our group, like Dwight and Sherry and Strand and John Dory. Tries to lock them in there even. And, you know, watching it, you're like, what, what, what is going on? Strand and Morgan had conversations before this. Strand Strand is an interesting character. There's times you are on his side and there's times you are not on his side. When he was talking with Morgan about, we're going to do this together. You're not going by yourself. We're all in this together. I promised Alicia that I'd get you guys here. We're going to get her. We got to stop this. Yes, maybe some of it's for myself, but we all have to work together. Then you're on his side. Um... Strand finds Morgan before he locks the door. He lets Strand come with him. And so this is a moment where you go, okay, this is the duo that we didn't know we needed. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I want to see these two work together. The, the acting, first of all, is amazing. And these, these two characters really work well together. Um, So because they had found the area where the, the, um, radiation levels had shot. I think it was like 2000 and some, so it shot up and it's dangerous. If they go in there, they will get radiation. They'll be sick. They'll either die soon or it's going to be over a period of time. And Morgan's ready to take that. Like he, he's like, how long do I have? How long will I live for? And he's like, if it makes, if it stops this and you all can live. And if you think about it, I'm not saying Teddy's right, but with Morgan's thinking is my end is your beginning. So Teddy, at some points, I understand what he's thinking now, what he, the way he's going about it is not the right way. Morgan's way, I guess, would be the right way, but you don't want to sacrifice. You have so much to live. He has so much to live for. And as a fan, if we don't see a Morgan and Rick reunited, we I'm going to riot anyway. Longtime fan of the shows will riot. And I hope anybody that listens, I know there's not a lot of listeners on this yet, but I hope that you guys riot with me for this. Um, yeah, uh, so it's funny that he's the, his end would be their beginning. So it's kind of funny how it comes full circle of like, sometimes these villains are right, but their way is not the way that we think following the heroes. Now, again, it goes back to if we watched, it was interesting because when Jeffrey Dean Morgan started playing Negan, he said, what if you watch Negan's story from the very beginning up until the moment, you know, he kills Glenn and Abraham. 
where he's like, would you look at Negan as the hero and Rick and their group as villains? Because we watched Rick's group all the way through. They're our heroes. They're the people we root for. But they've done bad things. And we have to admit that. Like anybody out there that's watched Breaking Bad, same thing. Like he has done terrible things. But the way they're doing it, it makes you think, well, he's doing it for good. But there's things he's done. You're like, wow, can we forgive him? And so it's the same thing with Rick. And so Jeffrey Dean Morgan made a good point. So it's the same thing. Like if you follow Teddy's journey, are you going to look at him as the hero? And for me, no, because he's trying to kill everybody to like start over. And kind of like a Thanos where he's going to snap his fingers, get rid of half a life, and hopefully the other half survives. So Teddy's kind of thinking if we all die, but Alicia... Alicia, I can't, I don't know why I can never say that. She and the rest can like build this community up. I just don't, it doesn't make sense. But so it's funny how it comes full circle where Morgan is kind of thinking, you know, his end can be the beginning. With Strand helping him, he talks Morgan out of going through there, going through the radiation. There's another way up. Let's go find a different way as quickly as they can. And through conversation of what Morgan is telling Strand and the message that Alicia gave Strand, this moment happens with Strand where he says, Alicia told me that message not for you, it's for me. So he like pushes Morgan into these walkers. And here is the moment where I was torn. At first, I thought he did it because he was going to go sacrifice himself. At the time, um, any group chat stuff you saw I didn't want Strand to get killed I didn't want Morgan to get killed now he pushed him through there took Morgan's uh, the head of his his staff that had the little axe thing on it or a huge axe thing so at the time when that first happened it was processing my brain of like did he really just try to kill Morgan or was this more of a I'm going to push you in here to get down there so you don't sacrifice yourself because he was talking about Alicia's message where Alicia's message where, you know, uh, the way I interpreted it was somebody may have to sacrifice themselves. Morgan would have to lead and he's a better leader than Strand. So at the time when I saw that, I thought, okay, Strand is doing this so that Morgan can survive to, to get through this. And, uh, you know, sacrifice himself. But then when you see all the walkers he pushed him through, like, I think he just tried to kill Morgan. And so then you start to think, is is Alicia talking bad about Morgan? Does she not think Morgan's the right person to lead? All this stuff is being processed, and it's how you interpret the message that she gave out to Strand from other talks they've had. And this is where you finally get the Dakota confrontation with Strand. Strand's going to go through the... um, radiation part with all the walkers and then you get Dakota where we need Carol out here to make her look at the flowers. Like, okay, it's time to look at the flowers. Bang. Like get rid of her. It's just time. Finally get that. Um, she comes over the thing and she tells him like strand killed Morgan. Like, and that's where it comes processed. He didn't correct her. So that's where it was kind of confirmed. Like, okay, you did that to kill him. Maybe he'll get out. Maybe not, but you killed him to go do this to look like a hero because I think a part of in the back of his mind is still with the Madison quote unquote death, which we better see her there better. We better see her in the finale or there better be signs that she is alive. And maybe we'll see in the Rick Grimes movies. Maybe she'll end up in the walking dead. I don't know, but she better be alive because we never really saw her die. And this is kind of where you see how Dakota, there's no reaction of like, she's off the plan. Because if she was a part of a plan and she finally, you know, just went off the rails and she's on the um, speaker talking to the group, there, there would have been co- some conversation of like, oh my gosh, like, but she she did. She's like, you know, the, our end is the beginning. Um, you guys, you know, this is why I kept Morgan alive. This is why, you know, Teddy's doing this and that. Strand, you know, you, you guys are bad people, but pretty much. I'm paraphrasing. And... Then we get my favorite moment of the episode. She goes to kill Strand. Morgan is alive. 
smacks the gun down, bashes her in the face, bashes her on the head. She gets thrown down. Now she's, I think he checked on. I think she's still alive. I guess, unfortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it. That was my favorite moment. But then you get the moment of Morgan. Morgan says he's alive and we're going to do this. And this is where you kind of figure out what, what strand was doing. He, he, as of right now, unless something changes in the next episode, he tried to kill Morgan and he's done some things where he can be forgiven. Some things you understand in the apocalypse. This one, I don't think he can come back from. So if this is true, where he tried to get Morgan killed so he can go look like the hero, he may not think he's worthy when he gets the radiation. He would die eventually, but he wants to look good. I don't know if there's any coming back from that, and it's unfortunate because Domingo, um, he's such a great actor with it. I actually like the character. He's done a lot of good things. There are a lot of shady things, but he finds a way to redeem himself a lot. And and one of the, the things you read about is where he shot um where he uh has come back from so much, he's done a lot of shady things. Is he able to come back from this even? Like this is big. Um, like when he shot Daniel in the face. Is that something that he, he was able to come back from that, even though Daniel still is not, I don't know if he's fully forgiven him. Like you saw where he took out the thing where his mouth, like it's pain. I got to eat soup and he, I don't know if he's fully forgiven him, but that's something he kind of came back from. He's come back from abandoning people. He's come back from certain things. This one, I don't know if he will. And Morgan even said, we're going to address this later. It's like, you picked the wrong guy to try to do that too. Um, but what was great is they finally found a safe way to get to Teddy. They found the the, the swipe the, the security guard swipes where he swiped through the door. And th the fear took a different route. You know, normally in these type of shows or movies, they they stop what's going on. That was so great about Infinity War where they, uh, even Civil War and Marvel where at the very end, nobody really won. And it was great at the end of um, Infinity War because they lost. And so it's sometimes good to see like in The Walking Dead, this type of thing, even in Breaking Bad or any other show, there's times where they're going to lose. Things aren't going to go the way the main characters won, and it didn't. Morgan didn't get there. He and Strand didn't get inside the thing in time. Um, Teddy and his guys got one missile off. They were able to stop them from getting the other missile off, and we finally get Morgan to meet Teddy. And that missile is like for the main area or it's going to go somewhere. So they got one missile off. It's going to shoot up and it'll eventually burst off. And I think it's different bombs will pretty much be dropped. Um, or it might just drop all the way down. Um, I don't know if they specify that's usually what happens with those submarine missiles. They shoot off different things or it's just going to come down in some area. And Teddy said, I don't know where it's going to come down. You know, like it has different coordinates, but I think for that particular one, it was just supposed to go everywhere. So it's going to go somewhere or he's not going to tell them and it's just going to end up somewhere. So they got one missile off. So now it's become, so Morgan kind of goes back to his thing of like, he lets him go. He lets Teddy and his guy go. This is that annoying part of Morgan. where like, I need you to be like what Negan would do. I need you to be like what Rick would do. Get rid of this guy, get rid of the other guy. So at least you can focus on the bomb, focus on the big picture and, and figure out what you're going to do. So that's the annoying part of Morgan from the episode. There was good parts. He's going back to that all life is precious and he doesn't like killing. I don't think he really does or he struggles with it. But it's one of those things where, come on, in this type of instance, you kind of need to get rid of this guy. You let him go and you figure everything out. Do you think he's not going to go do that again? Like, come on, man. Uh he even tells Strand to get out. And so now we have a bomb. A bomb is in the air. He doesn't know how to stop it. I don't know if there's a way in the submarine to stop it. Uh, they didn't get all the other bombs off. And because th that's what I'm talking about. The other bombs didn't go off and shoot them off. You're going to let Teddy and them walk away for the possibility of them to come back and shoot it off. Like you need to be like Rick in that moment. You need to be like Negan in that moment. No loose ends. So that's the only annoying part of Morgan. Um, like I said, these are just short snippets of the episode. But like like I said, it was a great episode. It had a lot of twists and turns. It had a lot of suspense. Made you think. 
um, and then you see them kind of fail. They have a bomb taken off. Now, the interesting thing is Fear the Walking Dead, I think their time, um, it's probably right behind where season nine started of The Walking Dead or right around that time, maybe, maybe. Because from season eight of The Walking Dead into season nine, I think a year, year and a half time jump somewhere in there. Because I don't know how long Morgan stayed. You know, it showed in the beginning of Fear of Season 4 where he had things growing in the... um, He lived in the junkyard where, you know, Jadis and them lived. He had things growing there. He had stuff built up. So And they keep saying, like, are you going to live here for a while? When are you going to come? So he lived there for a little bit. It probably took him a long time to travel down to Texas. He spent season four, which was a period of time, season five, a period of time, and then even coming into this. I mean, he was hurt enough to where he grew a beard out. So I am guessing, and I think it's probably out there somewhere, but my guess is that they're around that time period of season nine. So it's probably about a year, year and a half since season eight of The Walking Dead. And then, as we all know, The Walking Dead is uh, six years ahead now because they took that huge time jump, even months. They went through the winter. um, So they're way ahead. Of fear. So I think this bomb, however, the next episode is going to go. I don't know how that's going to go. Where are they going to find protection from this bomb? Does something happen where Dakota, I know she's still alive to some, she churns, gets them to where Alicia is, and they get safe there. I have no idea. But this could be. Um, because when that bomb goes off, I wonder if there's going to be like radiation. Like if anybody has ever watched The Last Man on Earth, that was kind of a thing where not necessarily the radiation and, and Last Man on Earth, it's somebody, but where they have a virus, you know, and sequently enough, we had COVID, you know, and, and stuff like that. But they had this virus, killed off everybody. He thought he was the last man on Earth, but there was other people. And then the very last episode before the, the show got canceled, people lived underground then they got like signs that there was people above. So they came out of the ground to, to, to live. So I, this is going to be one of those things where when the bomb goes off, is there going to be radiation? Can they not live up there anymore? If they're able to find um, shelter, do they have to live underground for a little bit? So is this fear the walking dead way of the bomb is going to go off in the season finale, but they're going to find a way to where most can survive. Are they going to get split up where some are protected? Some aren't wherever some are protected or get far enough away where they're not near where the bomb goes off. I don't know. I have a bad feeling we're going to lose some characters, but maybe this is fear's way of jumping the timeline. So how, however this ends either at the end, they jump and it shows this time jump. The bomb goes off and that's how it ends. Now we're going to get season seven. So we know that there's going to be people survived. We better still have Morgan is all I'm saying. I don't care about all it. It was John Dory, the original John Dory. I wanted him to survive, but he's gone. I, and we need Dwight. Dwight needs to survive. Sherry needs to survive. Because I think they have to have a conversation with Negan at some point as well. And Morgan needs to survive. And Alicia is going to survive no matter what. And Daniel, those are the ones that need to survive. And where is Wendell? We need to get Wendell. But however this ends, I think this is Fear's way of however it ends. When the bomb goes off, they come back to season seven. Maybe they lived underground for a little bit. Maybe it went off and they've lived above ground. I have no idea. And then I think it involved the CRM. Is this going to be the last season? It hasn't even said that. Like normally, you know, it's the last one when it's coming out. I have no idea. Um, but maybe this is fear of the walking dead's way. No matter how this ends, they can take a time jump because they got to catch up. I don't care. At some point it has to cross over to the walking dead. You've had the walking dead come into fear. It's about time we get the fear storyline into The Walking Dead, whether it's through the show, whether it's through a Rick Grimes movie. I know maybe with COVID changed everything. Maybe that was the original plan. I have no idea. But I think that's kind of how they do this. Maybe that's how they do a time jump. And they could do two in season seven. So if they live underground for a year or two, shows that. Something happens in season seven, take another time jump. Walking Dead could do it. They could do it. I think this bomb was their way of getting the time jump to justify it. You know, and Walking Dead... They, the, the only threat they had was the saviors. They took care of that. So they were able to do a time jump um, to, to give time to kind of give a backstory for the whispers and how they never knew about them because you to kind of show how it became about. So that way they could show 
that the whispers weren't always there. They kind of came later, gives them time to build that up. Um, so I think this is just fear's way of being able to jump time. And like I said, I have no theories on how this is going to work. The, the, the trailer we got and everything else, there's really no way for me to try to know most of the time you can kind of figure out what's going to happen or not even figure out, but have good thoughts. I have no idea. I know it shows Morgan and Grace staying at the submarine. You have our other characters, I think, have left, and they're trying to figure out where to go. How they're going to figure out where those bombs going off? Can they see it? How can they let people know? How they going to find Alicia? You know, she's down there. It does show. Um, one thing I want to know: how Teddy and his other lackey get out with our group outside. But you also have, or it shows Teddy Dakota on like this lake or this farm, looking up. I have no idea. Like they are, they're, they've accepted it. So I don't know if is Dakota finally going to redeem herself. I don't know if she can be redeemed. I don't care what she does. She could kill Teddy. She could tell them where the bomb's going. I even if she does that and they get down there, they've got to get rid of her. Um, so yeah, this it's going to be a big bang season finale. And I'm glad they didn't end it with this. If they ended it like this and there was this quote unquote cliffhanger, we would have been pissed. So they're going about the right way. They're taking a good Walking Dead route, even though The Walking Dead has, uh, hasn't always great with season finales. The one that pissed everyone off was Negan killing people. The rest have been okay. Uh, I have no thoughts on how this is going to end. You know, our characters are going to survive. It just depends on who. Is Strand going to survive? Is he going to be gone? Do they not kill him and banish him? And he that's how he comes into The Walking Dead. Does he remember that Morgan has said something about going to Virginia, Alexandria? Has he said that or just Virginia? Um, does he come across the CRM? Uh, does he come across uh, um, another group? Um, does he become part of that? I have no idea. Um, it'd be a cool way to go about it. So great episode. Um, hope everyone enjoyed it. We only have one more. Fear the Walking Dead. Season 6, episode 16 will be premiering and then we'll be done. And then I believe um, The Walking Dead World Beyond, they're only going two seasons. We had our first season last year. We'll get our second season, and then it's done. And hope, and that's supposed to really set up the Rick Grimes movie. I don't know how many movies they're going to do. Apparently, Andrew Lincoln has claimed he wants to come back to The Walking Dead in some form. So it, I have no idea. Maybe they're changing their minds. <laughs> Andrew Lincoln, you should have thought of that before you left. But I don't blame you. You've brought so much joy from The Walking Dead to us and so much great acting. You can't be mad at you. Um. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Again, you can find the video version of this episode on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel in the description of the podcast. That is my other podcast, the Coach Steve Show, where just different guests, different things. There's sports, there's Marvel, there's life conversation, there's all this other stuff, there's BS, everything else. You can find the video version on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. The podcast can be listened to anywhere, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to the podcast, find it. If you like it, please tell somebody, please share it out. Please like, subscribe, please leave a th four or five star review. If you don't want to do any of that, please don't pretend you never listened to it. Pretend this doesn't exist. It never happened. You don't want whatever. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Um, I appreciate y'all listening. We'll, like I said, more times opening up. I'll recap the walking dead, recap fear. It's going to take some time. We're going to get through it. I got some time opening up. We'll get it. We'll get it done. Uh, thanks everybody for listening so much. And I hope you guys all enjoy the podcast and let's go enjoy the season finale. That's going to be a big bang of fear of the walking dead season six. And we'll get into fear of walking dead season seven later on in the year. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>